welcome back everybody. Today we're doing this video because I seriously today alone got this question seven times and I get it every day multiple times. So I'm going to try to make a video that I can point people to um, that will kind of cover the answer because it's a very long answer and I don't like to get out all the time. Uh, so here's the deal, right? The question I get all the time is what muzzle device should I get for my AR, for my AK, whatever the case may be. Uh, a couple things to think about there. What do you want it to do? Do you want it to reduce flash? Do you want it to reduce recoil? Do you want it to uh, do both of those, which we'll get into at the end of the video? Um, there's, they all do different things. Very few of them do them all well, um, or maybe none of them do them all well. We'll get into that again, like I said, later on in the video. So first off, what's happening when, you're, when you have a rifle being fired? So um, there's a pressure of high, of high pressure, a cloud, I should say, of high pressure gas or a bubble, whatever you want to call it. Uh, coming out the end of that muzzle, uh, when that reacts with air, it creates an incandescent or the light that you see uh, for your flash. So that's 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 the effect we have there. Um, so brakes work by pushing that gas, that cloud of gas, to the side or to or up or to the side and up. Uh, muzzle uh, flash shatters work by redirecting that gas so that way it doesn't create the uh, atmosphere where it's going to ignite when it reacts to the air. Um, so let's get into each of them. With flash hiders, you're going to have some advantages. So first off, you're going to have a lower noise level. So they're going to be uh, less loud than brakes. They're also less loud than a bare muzzle device. And one thing I should back up on is any muzzle device you have, uh, whether it be a brake, flash hider, um, etc., will reduce the flash signature of your rifle over a bare muzzle device. So, I mean, I've done a mil million tests here on the channel. You can look back at some of those tests. The nighttime shooting, and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Um, so even a break will reduce the flash signature versus a uh, flash hider. However, a flash hider will do it much better than obviously a break will. Um, you're also going to get the reduction in noise, like we talked about, and a reduction in concussion, which can be very important if we're talking about um, home defense or uh, self-defense scenarios, particularly indoors. So uh, if you're using a rifle indoors, they're extremely, extremely loud. There's a myriad of sources online which will tell you the decibel levels, but really uh, well above 150 decibels, sometimes even you know up into getting towards 170, which can really damage your hearing. So minimizing that is a very good thing. Um, obviously with flash hiders, you also, with the flash reduction, if you're, if you're using them in an environment, especially where there's night vision being used, or um, you know if there's a more advanced, sort of like a military type or well-trained enemy, uh, they will be able to obviously detect your flash signature and fire towards that. So that's that's an advantage of a flash hider. The, le the less of that you can have, the better, obviously. Um, so those are some of the advantage of it. The disadvantage of a flash hider is that it's going to do um, little to mitigate the muzzle rise. Now, just like anything on your muzzle will reduce um, your, your blast and your flash, anything in your muzzle will reduce the muzzle climb as well, just if you can, or in the recoil impulse. If you think about it, even a flash hider generally going to redirect gases, usually their slants or slots, and that redirecting of the gas reduces the, the felt recoil as well as the muzzle rise to a certain extent. How much is going to obviously vary on a lot of different factors, ammo, rifle, gas system, etc. Um, so you do have a little bit of reduction with most flash hiders, but nowhere near what you'd see with a break. So I guess we'll get into breaks next. With breaks, you have a bunch of different kinds out there today. So really trying to cover them all is would take all day. But um, like I said, they're either going to redirect gas to the sides, up, or sometimes even all around. You'll see some of those, like uh, um, I believe the Dynacomp does that, where it just kind of dissipates it in all directions. Now, when you're looking at that, one thing I should bring up is that if it's dissipating uh, gases in all directions, um, you may have uh, sand and dirt kicking up from you if you're firing from the prone position. So something to keep in mind there. Generally, my opinion is you sort of want to have the bottom of your brake uh, not having gases being directed that way um, for that reason as well as many others. Um, so some of the disadvantages of your brake is it's loud. Uh, depending on the design, uh, they can be extremely loud. They can increase the decibel level of your rifle 10 decibels or more. Um, particularly ones that have gigantic ports on the side, or if you have rearward facing ports. Now, with rearward facing ports, um, one of the advantages of it is if you think, if you have your rifle up, right, the recoil impulse is generally coming back into your shoulder, that gas is going to be directing it 
like this, the gas is going to be directed like this, which helps to sort of almost pull the rifle off your shoulder a little bit to decrease the force coming back of the recoil. So those are extremely effective. If you look at a lot of like 50 cal brakes that are on the market, um, they tend to be shaped like that because it works. It works very well. And if you have a very uh, violently recoiling weapon, it's helpful for the shooter um, from, from an impulse perspective anyway. Uh, the downside of that, obviously, is the noise as well as the blast. Folks around you, if you're shooting on a public range, if you work on a team where you're doing um, like CQ uh, close quarters battle um, type things, the brakes can be annoying um, for folks in the room next to you. Not only the noise level, but also the blast. You ever feel a concussion effect um, if you're shooting next to someone like that. So uh, that's sort of the downside of it. Obviously, if you're talking about self-defense, uh, particularly inside of a room, um, that can really do some damage to your hearing. Um, the advantage of them is that they absolutely help follow up shots uh, speed, particularly for more uh, advanced and skilled shooters. You'll see your, uh, your splits between shots go down. Um, that can be a very good thing if you're a competitive shooter. It can also be a very good thing if you're on a two-way range and you need to be able to put multiple rounds on multiple threats. Um, that said, again, there's pros and cons to everything, so there's a trade-off there. Um, but that is essentially how brakes and comps work. Folks always say they want the best of both worlds, right? Well, it's very hard to do. If you're uh, doing something that's going to control muzzle, muzzle rise, muzzle climb, or reduce recoil, generally there's going to be more of a blast effect. Nine times out of ten, that's the case. There are a few, I'm sure there's many more that I'm going to miss here, and you guys feel free to post below in the comments ones that you've had experiences with uh, that sort of... Um, do both things relatively well, if you will. Uh, the first that comes to mind is the AR-15 uh, A2 birdcage flash hider. It does. It works well. If you don't think your A2 does anything for you in terms of mitigating recoil, turn it upside down, go to the range, and tell me how that works out for you. It absolutely makes a difference. Um, it's not the best break. It's not the best flash hider. It's an okay compromise of both. Um, another one that's a very good uh, hybrid type design is from Bravo Company, their gunfighter. I did a review of it here on the channel and uh, you know it's sort of like I said it doesn't really it's not the best compensator or break it's not the best flash hider it's in between it does both relatively well um, another one that but I would also say sort of like the the uh, gunfighter kind of leans a little bit towards a break or a cop a little less like a flash hider um, but that's a personal opinion I don't know if that's quantifiable or not um, and then also the white sound uh, defense fossa 556 I believe I reviewed that here as well uh, that one sort of leans more towards a flash hider, a little less more of a brake comp type effect, um, but is a hybrid, so it does both things sort of well. Um, there are others, like I said, and again, guys, if you're if you're out there and you have experience with something I don't have experience with, or I didn't mention your post below in the comment section, by all means. But that is sort of the, what do you want? You need to make that decision. You know, my opinion, if you are not using a suppressor and you're not going to use your protection and your, your, your weapon is for a self-defense type scenario, um, as a civilian especially, or even for military, but if you don't foresee engaging multiple targets, um, <clears throat> I kind of recommend going with Flash Hider or even an A2 or, or, or the Gunfighter or the, the one I just mentioned, sort of one of the hybrids. Uh, reason being is uh, everything's loud. Um, if you're having to kill someone, obviously sacrificing your, ear, your hearing is not a good thing because a lot of times after um, be, having to use your weapon in self-defense, you need to communicate, whether it's to your wife, uh, to your kids, whatever the case may be. That communication is key. Um, if you want to incorporate some other aspects, like a suppressor or maybe even uh, electronic ear pro, by all means, uh, do that. But you don't always have time. So um, and you don't always have those resources at your disposal, depending on where you live, etc. So, um, for instance, on my home defense rifle, so I know folks will always ask, well, what's on there? The E2 flashlight. That's what's on there. Um, so I have, obviously, access to a bunch of different things. Um, and that's what I go with. It works well. Um, if I had to go with something else, it'd be one of the two I mentioned earlier. Uh, they both work well and sort of are a good compromise. But, um, so that's my recommendations. That's what I think of it. That's the answer to your question. Uh, you guys need to assess what your priorities are, what you're going to use it for, uh, what you want out of it, what you can afford, and, uh, pretty much go with it, guys. But there's so many good options out there. You know, 10 years ago, the majority of these options were not out there. Nowadays, there are purpose design um, muscle devices that will do a myriad of things and uh, a lot of them are very very good and a very good improvement over what we've seen even in four or five years past so 
that's about it, guys. I hope I didn't ramble too long. I hope I answered some of the questions out there. Uh, if you have any more questions, you can always post them in the comment section. You can also post over at my Facebook page. But thanks for watching, guys. If you're new to the channel and you just checked this video out, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Those of you that are subscribers, so thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And I hope to see all of you in the next video.